Welcome back to the Nonprofit Comeback Summit. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Uh, this is going to be a wonderful session. We're talking to Vishal and Preeti about how to position your organization for a grant and what the best way you can achieve one or secure one is. And I think that that's a super, super important topic. You know, earlier today we talked with Heather. Uh, Safkin about how to write a grant and how to position ourselves to get a grant. And now we're looking at this from the other side of the, the, the situation, from uh, the perspective of a bank, as well as the perspective of a foundation. So I think that this is going to be a wonderful conversation that's also going to give a lot more insight into the other side of the coin. So I'm, I'm ecstatic to have this conversation with you too. Now, before we even get into this, I do want to introduce both of these speakers. Vishal is a banker who has been a banker for the past 20 years. He lives in New Jersey, and uh, he's got a very unique combination of skills with experience in retail and business, uh, but also in the banking and wealth management area of uh, expertise. So his entre entrepreneurial mindset to adapt, adapt to challenges is, is unparalleled. Right, he is able to adapt and overcome any kind of roadblock in the way, and for that, I admire him very much. Preeti, she has been in the industry for fourteen over fourteen years, and uh, she's driven by corporate and social responsibility to make change in corporations and in organizations for the better and provide a more inclusive environment understanding what each person needs from the strategic and operational level, um, providing access to those who need access that are oftentimes left out of the conversation. And I think that that's what's led both of these wonderful speakers into, the, into this session today is to talk to nonprofits about how we can position ourselves for grants in the midst of challenging times and in the midst of a pandemic and overcome this obstacle while still paying attention to those that are oftentimes left out of the conversation. Thank you both so much for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to this. So if there's anything I missed, um, Vishal, is there anything you want to say about yourself, any kind of expertise that makes you worth listening to, even yeah, though I well, already know for, you're worth listening to? Uh, no, absolutely. No, first of all, uh, Garrett, thank you for organizing this and having us, uh, having me and Preeti here today. Uh, we're glad to be here. And uh, this, given this crazy environment that we're in, uh, this conference could not be more timely. Uh, and the, the conversation that uh, Preeti and I will have could not be more timely, given the pressures that nonprofits are, are facing now, given you know, whether it's fundraising that's drying up uh, from economic pressures that, that the general population's feeling, or mm -hmm. it could be allocations from government uh, you know, some nonprofits are, you know, they have a, sometimes they, they, they're used to being a line item on a budget, right, on a state budget. And now they're, now that's not the case because state budgets are under pressure. So this conversation could not be more, more timely. So I'm hoping to uh, offer some insight about uh, what the bank, what Investors Bank is doing. Uh, we have a unique program called Care to Share. And then my colleague Preeti is going to talk about uh, the work of uh, the Investors Bank Foundation. Uh, just a just a very brief uh, uh, background. Um, I am a, so yeah. I'm a business banker with Investors Bank. Uh, I serve both for profit and not for profit companies, uh, really helping them to manage cash flow in a in a better way, and also to help uh, the stakeholders within a business or a nonprofit. Uh, spend less time, not more, on their banking tasks. So they can focus on growing their company, or in this case, with a nonprofit, helping them to further their mission in the in the community uh, and not spend more time on their banking. So, um, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Preeti Mehta. Uh, she represents uh, the Investors Bank Foundation, uh, which is a separate organization from Investors Bank, but with a, a mission to support uh, nonprofit organizations on behalf of Investors Bank, uh, and you went into her uh, you went into her background uh, a bit, but you know, 15 years of experience in the nonprofit and philanthropic uh, sectors. Uh, she has a master's degree in public policy from uh, the University of New Mexico School of Public Administration, and uh, she's currently a, a board member of the Council of New Jersey Grant Makers. So, Prithi, please, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Thank you. Um, thank you for both of you for that lovely introduction. Um, yeah, uh, it's definitely interesting times right now in both the nonprofit and philanthropic sector. Um, 
2020 definitely um, pushed philanthropy and nonprofits in many ways. We saw fundraising events go virtual. Many organizations may have had to cancel their events. We've also um, seen some great successes. Some organizations were able to uh, host a virtual event and they've raised more funds than um, they've ever raised at an event before. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing more, uh, more organizations that are also uh, honing in more to their mission and serving the communities that they originally intended to serve. And they are really reaching out to um, the communities that where they're living and working in. And they are making sure that the members of their communities are um, having their needs met still. They're filling those, those gaps. I think that's what um, best describes the nonprofit sector is that nonprofits usually fill the gaps that um, other services may not um, be able right. to provide. So yeah. um, it's really important that we support our nonprofit organizations that are in our communities so that they are able to fill, fill these gaps. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, this, this is an, a necessary conversation that needs to happen. And we do need to be mindful of, of where nonprofits are being involved at, at, at every level, right? So, you know, could you tell us a little bit about like the, the, the history of Investors Foundation? Because I, I know it's a separate entity from Investors Bank and they work together quite a bit, but could you tell me a little bit about like the, the origin of Investors Bank and then maybe a little bit about the mission? Because I know you kind of alluded to that with considering nonprofits at every level, but um, what is the specific mission uh, of in Investors Foundation as well as how they came to be? So Investors um, Foundation originally started in 2005 and the foundation is separate from Investors Bank. The mission of the foundation is to support creative initiatives to diverse community organizations that support the arts, education, health and human services, youth and affordable housing across the bank's footprint. It's a very broad mission, which uh, we are very proud of actually, because we are able to serve so many organizations in the communities that are across the bank's footprint. So pretty much um, like 90% of the nonprofit organizations that are across the bank's footprint would qualify. We have awarded hospitals, healthcare facilities, YMCAs, um, youth programs, programs for veterans, affordable housing initiatives, financial literacy programs, just all sorts, a lot in education as well. We, um, we funded a lot in education also. Um, arts and culture, just local community theaters. And so we fund um, organizations all across, um, pretty much across the gamut, um, which is great. It's very hard to find a funder that has such a broad mission. Right, absolutely. So when it comes to, to funding specifically in, in context of these organizations and, and, and securing grants, um, is the funding coming from Investors Foundation or is that coming from Investors Bank? What does that look like? Do I have to be a, a customer with Investors Bank to receive a grant from the foundation? No, uh, okay. the bank and the foundation are two separate entities. So uh, you do not need to be a banking customer to submit a grant application to Investors Foundation. Um, however, uh, the foundation um, works with the bank in the sense that we like to support organizations that bank employees may be involved in. So they could mm -hmm. either be volunteering for your nonprofit, they may be a board member with your nonprofit, sure. um, or the organization is just doing good work in the community where right. the bank has a branch or a presence. Yeah, absolutely. And, and where all do you guys have presence? We have over 150 branches across um, New York and New Jersey. So primarily um, most of New Jersey and then in New York, it's uh, Staten Island, Manhattan, Brooklyn. Gotcha. Our, our primary presence is. Awesome, awesome. And, and so um, this, this system that you guys have created, this Care to Share program, is that Investors Foundation and Investors Bank or is that one or the other? That is, the Care to Share program is a bank program. So Vishal okay. would be able to talk about that. Awesome. You know, I, I heard that and it, it, it sounded really cool. Can you tell me a little bit more uh, about this Care to Share program? So the, the Care to Share program is a, a unique program where the, the now Investors Bank, in this case, is, is, is making donations to organizations 
uh, throughout the community. But the, the interesting twist there is that it's our account holders that actually direct those donations. Mm -hmm. uh, so in other words, when, a, when, an account, when, a, when someone opens an account with investors, they can look at a roster of organizations that are, that, that are eligible to be supported and they can direct uh, the bank to make a donation on the, uh, basically on their behalf to those organizations. Uh, so basically, uh, as, as long as the, the, the requirement there is that the, or, the, the, or, the nonprofit needs to be a 501c3 mm -hmm. and they need to maintain a, a checking account with us and then they, that 501c3 will then be on a roster, our roster of organizations that could be supported. So then anytime somebody opens an account with us, they, uh, and if that organization is near and dear to their heart, they can support them. And so I like to call it, uh, um, you know, donations on, on autopilot, if you will, because it's a, it's a quarterly donation that the bank is making uh, based on the balances of that account holder that wants to support that organization. It's a quarterly donation that's coming to that organization without them having to apply for anything or ask for it. It's just there. Gotcha. So just just so to make sure that I, I have it clear, right? If I have a if I have an account with with Investors Bank, and um, every, every quarter I'm making this donation to a specific organization, is that donation coming out of my account? or what's yeah. happening there? That's coming from the bank. That's a bank donation and our account holders are actually directing gotcha. that where that donation goes. That's the, okay. so that's a, that's a bank donation. And again, that's mm -hmm. separate. Uh, if you're, if an organization is participating in the care to share program, that's completely unique from the, the grant program, for example, from the investors mm -hmm. foundation. And it's completely unique from any one-off financial support that perhaps, you know, I think Priti said it best about our local, the local aspect of what we do. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, we, because of our branch presence in a certain community, we may support, we may give all, give some one-off support to an event that an organization has. Right. Uh, that's completely separate and unique from any of those two aspects. Gotcha. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, that information. Now, um, can you tell me a little bit about like, cause I want to get back onto the, the grants. I, I understand this care to share program, which is really awesome. Um, are you, before I get into the, back to the grants, are you aware of any other, um, systems or, or, um, opera programs like that in any other place of the U S um, are you aware of other care to share esque programs? The I guess the most similar thing that I've seen out there is uh, like the Amazon Smile program. I suppose mm -hmm. it's kind of similar, uh, sure. where so every purchase you make, you can I guess a, a donation's made to an organization of your choice. Something, right. I, I kind of equate it to something similar to that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. And by the way, if you don't have Amazon Smile, you should check it out because it's phenomenal. It's like free donations, especially when right. it comes to um, a nonprofit engaging with their members. Right. And, and, you know, recently I was, I was looking at that and they've made it a lot easier to not only get into Amazon smiles program, but also for users to actually set that up because before it was just a link and now it's actual, actually an integration. Cause like I would have to click a, a, a bookmarked tab in Amazon to be able to get that. But now they've made it where it's kind of just defaultly built into your account, you know? So that's pretty cool. But um, that, that's, a, that's a little bit off topic. Let's go back to, to grants and, and the application process. What kind of grants does the foundation provide to nonprofits um, and, and for what reason, what size? So um, that's a really good question. So our average, um, average award is between $1,500 and $5,000. Um, one of the things that's really great about our foundation, I believe, is that we um, support programmatic expenses and operating expenses, which is mm -hmm. something that's been uh, quite a challenge for nonprofits, especially during these times when programs have changed or they have a different base. Um, sure. So it's really, um, it's really something unique when an organization can come to us and we will allow funds to be used for um, items that may not be uh, they, they may not be able to find funding for otherwise. So this sure. could be the operating expenses, um, office supplies, things like that, that may just not be a line item in other grant right. programs. Um, right. One of the, another thing that's really um, 
And that has been really beneficial to our grantees in these tough times as well. Mm -hmm. Many organizations had to, when the pandemic began, had to actually go to their funders and request for mm -hmm. their um, funds to be reallocated to another program or another right. initiative, or they may have had to defer using their funds. Um, sure. With us, we, uh, we allowed organizations to redirect their funds when applicable. And many of them, uh, it helped keep their lights on. It helped uh, use the funds where they needed to use it the most. That's um, wonderful. Yeah. So when we're talking about these grants that you're giving to numerous uh, organizations, what is it exactly that I need to do as an organization in order to get a grant from the Investors Foundation? What is the foundation looking for when it comes to giving grants? Um, we are looking to support organizations that are doing good work in the communities that the bank has its footprint in. Um, so we believe that our grantees are doing great work and they are just working each day to make their communities a better place to live and work. So right, but like, what we're looking for is in particular tied to the grant application. We, um, I ask that you, I, we always recommend that you read the instructions on the grant application. Yep. Our foundation is very unique. We receive over 400 requests each quarter. Mm -hmm. And so we award grants four times a year, March, June, September, and December. So every quarter we receive over 300 grant requests. And so for that reason, our grant request is quite simple. Most of the questions that we have on our application, we ask for less than a thousand, um, a thousand words because we have just so many requests that we aren't able to read uh, a 20 page novel for every grant request that we receive. Right. So I think it's very important that a nonprofit actually, you know, pay attention to this and read um, the instructions on the application. Mm -hmm. And then um, after they submit, after you submit your grant request, I always recommend, I think it's just a good thing to do to stop by your local branch or reach out to your banker in your area um, and just let them know, let them know that you submitted a grant request, um, introduce yourself introduce your nonprofit to the local branch and maybe invite them to an event of yours. Uh, just have them learn about your organization sure. because we really do, ha we have a vetting committee that is comprised of individuals that are in the communities. Um, mm -hmm. And so when, a, when, a, when an individual comes to us and tells us, you know, I attended this event by this nonprofit or this organization is doing great work, Mm -hmm. And we do like to kind of keep that in mind and know that, you know, someone has seen the organization's work sure. and how they are executing their mission. So, so this is a really intimate situation when you're when you're giving these grants to these organizations. It's because you've built a relationship with them, right? Cool. Yes. So like, help me out here. What, give me a cheat sheet for how to get a grant from Investors Foundation. What what are the, the nails that I need to hit in order to succeed? Well, um, submitting your grant application is uh, right. definitely yeah. one. And like I said, following the instructions that I said, uh, which is, you know, doing, following the instructions. And then it really is, um, you know, some organizations have to submit a request two or three times before they're funded. It really is a, it really is a process. It is not just a, um, it's really not just a one-step process. It really sure. is a process. Um, it's important that you do, uh, you know, like I said, uh, get the bank involved, you know, invite them to one of your events, um, let them learn about your nonprofit and your organization sure. and just stay in touch. Stay in touch is staying in touch is important. And like I said, you do not have to be a banking customer to receive a grant from our foundation. Right. Absolutely. So let me, let me ask you this real quick is, would it be a good idea or, or, or should I go build a relationship with my banker or, or consult my banker, or ask them about this before I actually submit or should I submit first and then come to my banker? You can do either. Yeah. You can do either um, because uh, if you already have a relationship with somebody at investors, um, you, you know, they might have seen your event and they might encourage you to submit a grant application for that request. Sure. Um, they may, they may encourage the request or you may just stop in afterwards and say hello and introduce yourself sure. after you submit a request. 
Sure. I mean, right now, especially in these times, uh, people aren't really doing as many face-to-face -face meetings. So true, true. I want to encourage everyone to be safe. So then, I mean, I, Vishal, I know you'd probably help me, but if, if I walk into to a, a bank in general, um, would I be able to get assistance from one of the bankers to help me make a, a, an application? Do you know if that changes from bank to bank or, or would it be uh, more dependent on the individual? That's a good question. I, I would say that uh, engaging the banker can, can only help your, your cause in terms of getting mm -hmm. Landing the grant. Uh, I think just building your relationship with the bank uh, kind of sets a foundation for some level of success. Sure. Um, with the bit, would we be able to help with the application itself? Um, that might be a little bit tricky because I mean the banker won't, won't necessarily have that firsthand knowledge of the organization to really offer uh, a, a great deal of expertise in, in, in handling that application. Right. But I think engaging the banker in a conversation is a, is a great thing. And uh, perhaps that banker can also maybe go to bat for you uh, since they know the organization uh, now, now that there's some, uh, there's some familiarity there, perhaps sure. they can go to, they, they can uh, go to bat for you when it comes to applying for the grant. Right. Okay, cool. So um, let's, let, let me ask you this kind of like thought experiment. Let's say I, I'm in an organization and I walk in um, if I start asking for funding, how is that different from a grant, right? If I'm asking you for funding, um, whether that's uh, a loan or, or, or otherwise, um, what does the process look like for an organization that's different from a, a for-profit company? That, um, well, we, so we have, uh, we, we, we have lending programs for both uh, for-profit and not-for-profit. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's it is. I would say it is challenging for a for a for a nonprofit on the lending side. Uh, it is a it is a bit of, uh, of a challenge, but um, it's uh, you know we we have done. Uh, I, I know we we do lend to nonprofits though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it's there's an application process with that, and uh, and it's it's just important to sit down with your with the banker to to really dive down and understand like how the how the funds will be used and how will that, how will those funds help to grow that organization or what, what will be enhanced at the organization with this funding right. and, um, and, and, and what will be, uh, uh, frankly, how is that the bank will ob obviously wants to understand like, how is it being paid back as well? So they, they have to, so that's where engaging the banker uh, and having a, uh, a robust conversation about that will, will help. Right. So the, the process for getting lending uh, from a bank is, is different than the process for getting a grant from a foundation or, or even from another organization, um, obviously. Right. That, that, that's kind of a gimme. It, it, it's self-explanatory. Um, but it is important to understand that there are multiple avenues through which organizations can get funds outside of just grants or just lending. And there's so many different options. Right. Um, you know, earlier we were talking to Heather and she talked about how, um, what's it called? Grant Watch is a great place to, to secure grants as well as there was one more. I don't remember what it is. I, I apologize, but there, there's, a, there's a, a number of different places people can go to access these grants, right? So uh, on, on the side of the foundation, your application process is, is fairly simplistic, fairly quick. Now, are there kind, any kind of restrictions that organizations need to be aware of when it comes to uh, attempting to, sec to secure this grant? Well, we do have um, some exclusions in our grant, uh, grant app, in our grant process. Um, organizations, uh, we do not fund individuals. We do not award grants to individuals. Uh, we do not fund private foundations. Uh, we do not fund programs outside of the bank's footprint. And we also don't um, fund political labor or lobbying organizations as well. So there are a few requirements as well that you have to uh, read. And if you check out our guidelines, you'll see the organizations that we do not award grants to. Yeah, Those sure. are the restrictions. Yeah. Also, we only award grants to an organization once every 12 months. Okay. So if you're current, if you re just received a grant one month ago, then you wouldn't be able to reapply until 12 months after. Yep. 
And um, those are pretty much our. Gotcha. That's well, pretty much it for that's us. That's awesome. So uh, here, here's what I've done is if, if anyone wants to get the guidelines and the application link, as well as uh, Preeti's and, and Vishal's information, you can text Vishal to 888-357-4456. Sorry, I don't have, have your own keyword, Preeti. I was fine. stressed for time. And then we decided to, to do a three-way conversation, right? Um, so if, if you want Preeti and Vishal's information, just text Vishal to 888-357-4456. That's going to give you their contact information, how you can get in contact with them, as well as a link to the applications and guidelines. I uh, want to make sure that I put that out there so that everyone knows about it. Um, but now I kind of want to kind of shift to, uh, instead of just talking about grants and the application process, as, as well as how it looks from the foundation and uh, banking side, I want to look at kind of the current current times, like with the pandemic and still in full swing, hopefully coming to an end. Um, what does funding look like um, either for businesses and for nonprofits? Uh, what does that look like right now? Well, from my perspective, um, our foundation just had a um, our December meeting, and we had over five hundred grant requests. Mm -hmm. um, so there are more funding requests. So uh, organizations are in greater competition. Mm -hmm. So at our at Investors Foundation, we like to award um, or we like to give away more awards. So to more organizations, so that we can sprinkle a little bit of funding across right. many organizations, which is how we do it. I think it's um, I think it's very nice. I think it's uh, very I think it's very generous of our foundation's board of directors. And it's, that's pretty much what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of events have also gone virtual. Um, a lot of organizations are being more creative in their fundraising sure. efforts. Um, and we are also seeing a lot of organizations come together, come together for their missions. And that's been really great as well. Right, that's awesome. So, you know, you, you mentioned competition. Uh, what are some kind of things that an organization can do to set themselves apart? What can I do to, to make myself uh, have a leg up on everyone else when it comes to uh, obtaining a grant? Um, you know, reach out to the funder. Reach out to the funder. I always encourage the conversation of reaching out to your funders. Um, you know, whether it's us investors or another foundation, um, you know, speak to them and see if they, if you aren't able to utilize the funds as they have directed, see if they'll be willing to speak, see if they'd be willing to allow you to redirect the funds um, to mm. a different um to a different purpose, especially during these times. So right. I do encourage um, organizations to reach out to funders. However, there are some foundations that I know that do not want to speak to applicants. So um, sure. you would have to respect that in their yeah. guidelines as well. Absolutely. But I, I always do encourage organizations to reach out. Right. Awesome. So now, now we know how, how we should position ourselves for a grant. We've talked about you guys' program as, as well as what it looks like current day. What happens when I do um, secure a grant? What needs to happen? Um, I mean, obviously, we need to be using the money for what we say we're going to use it for. Um, but do we need to follow up? once the money is spent and, and kind of check in with you guys, what does that look like? And, and what's the best way to kind of come into that situation? So our foundation has a very simple final report. Um, we ask that um, when, after, after an organization is funded and their project is complete, that they submit a simple fi final report. Um, we pretty much are looking for information on how they utilize the funds and um, if the funds were spent according to their grant application. Another thing that I, I think is important is, um, like we said earlier, you know, reach out to, reach out to your local branch, um, invite them to your events, uh, keep, keep them in the loop of what's going on. Um, you know, if you're having an event, invite them. Um, invite them to see one of your programs. Stay in touch. Awesome. It's all about relationship, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to build that relationship. So you reach out to the funders, you reach out to the lenders. And as, as a byproduct of building this relationship, you are more inclined to get that, get that grant oftentimes, right? So, um, well, it's that, but also, um, you may also reach, you may also be able to extend the reach of your own program. True. 
yeah, you know, more absolutely. people knowing about your programs and services may help you secure additional funding from other funders. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's not, I didn't just, think it's about not just about um, receiving funding from one organization. It's yeah. about multiple organizations and extending your reach. Very true. Very true. Um, so, you know, like a, as we come to the end of this, this session and this conversation, um, what are some golden nuggets that you would like to drop uh, for anyone listening, what are some really important things we should take away from, from this conversation that we should remember? Uh, follow the instructions on the grant application. Yeah, <laughs> can't that was emphasize, a bit that, can't emphasize that enough. Um, everyone has a different application, so for sure. And, um, and you know, keep at it. Um, and be creative as well. Be creative. Be creative. Especially during these times, we're seeing a lot of unique, um, a lot of organizations that are doing a lot of unique initiatives. Absolutely. And I think you said it best, uh, Preeti, engaging your local, the local people in the bank uh, to, to help you as well. Engage local people. There you go. That's, that's what it's about. Okay, cool. So I want to go into a time of Q&A um, for anyone watching on the Facebook Live or the Zoom webinar. Now is an opportunity for you guys to uh, ask some questions that you might have um, for either of our speakers. I'm going to give you guys a moment uh, to, to kind of get that in. You can do one of three things. You can either ask a question here on the Zoom webinar. You can ask it on uh, our, our live Facebook stream, or you could just text the uh, chat the summit number 888-357-4456 with any questions that you have it's going to come directly to my phone and we'll do some uh, real-time q a's so while we're waiting for that um, i do want to ask you guys um, what do you think is the most important focus that people should be or organizations should be using grants for in this situation right i know you said be creative is, is that part of what's getting people more um more grants um they should be using their funds right now to do what they need to do to keep their organization going right now um and so, you know, using the funds for operating expenses and also just serving their targeted communities. Um, I know that a lot of nonprofits right now are really tapped on resources for to help their communities, but that's what they should be using it for, is to keep themselves going. Awesome. Okay, cool. We've got a, a question here from Michael, and, and he asks, is there a minimum number of people required in a foundation to be considered for a grant since you said you don't fund individual owners or individually owned organizations? Well, we don't give grants to individuals. So, right, right. Um, what we mean is that we don't award funds to a particular person. Um, so we would fund an organization that serves many like a YMCA. Okay, cool. Um, so like what, how many, how many people on my team would I need in order to be given this grant? Because I mean, kind of by what you said, it's like you, you wouldn't give Garrett Halsell uh, a grant for $1,500, but his organization, which is just him, you might give that grant to, what does that look like? I mean, obviously I have to prove that I'm helping people, but it, at well, what degree do people get involved? Well, I mean, it depends on what kind of a program you have. So if you mm -hmm. had an organization where you were giving away backpacks to under privileged children, mm -hmm. um, that would be a viable program. Um, I, yeah, I really, I don't really, it's a very okay. complicated question, so I don't think no I worries. know how to answer it. <laughs> That's all good. That's all good. Okay, cool. Now, um, let's see, when it comes to uh, the grants, is there a, a like specific time frame that that is is more likely for a, an organization to be accepted? Like, do you need to see like how how long of a history of demonstrated service do you guys want to see for your grantees? Uh, you could be a new nonprofit that's popped up. Um, although more than likely we wouldn't fund a brand brand new organization, mm -hmm. but um, organizations that have been around that are doing that are that are working um, their mission. There you go. Awesome. 
And uh, one, one final question in regards to board members, um, is it the responsibility of board members to seek grants or is there a specific committee that ought to exist for that? Can you repeat that question? I just wanna. Um, let, me, let me try to rephrase it. So um, D David's basically asking, um, does there need to be a committee to pursue the grants or is that on the responsibility of the board members? To pursue the grant? Yeah, to uh, attempt to secure it, I assume, like to fill out the application and stuff. Well, um, an individual would submit it, but then many nonprofits have board members that would review the request before it's submitted. So an individual could write it out and then many times a board would wanna see the grant applications that are being submitted for funding. Gotcha, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Okay, so with that being said, this has been a wonderful conversation. I enjoyed this session. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, uh, is there any way that we can get in contact with you guys besides texting Vishal to the, the summit number? Where can we find you guys? You can email the foundation at info at investorsfoundation.org. Okay, awesome. And we have information about uh, care to share program at investorsbank.com. And of course I can, I can speak specifically uh, to organizations about the program as well. Awesome. And so can, we can find you guys on, on LinkedIn, on uh, Go uh, not Google, that doesn't exist anymore, on Facebook, things like that, Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. L LinkedIn, yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. Same here. Wonderful. Well, there you go. You guys heard it here. Thank you so much for a wonderful session five. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about how nonprofits can leverage and monetize their virtual events, stay tuned and uh, you can text the word event six to uh, the summit number in order to get access to that next workshop in case you haven't signed up for it already. We've got a wonderful speaker named Ify and she's gonna tell us all about how to leverage virtual events and monetize them. So this is gonna be a great session six. Um, we will start here in about 23 minutes. I am so eager and excited to have that. And uh, as for now, that's, that's gonna be all. So thank you so much for tuning in and we will catch you all later. Signing off for now, have a good one.